there is nothing like a typical road cross section. This is because along a road corridor, you might be forced to have different kinds of cross sections because of the prevailing conditions and constraints that are governing the design. And we'll demonstrate how to use conditional subassemblies to help you with the problem of having multiple cross sections. Instead of breaking your corridor into so many regions, applying different cross sections, let's see how we can use uh, subassemblies, conditional subassemblies in particular, in creating corridor that will represent an assembly that will represent different cross-section scenarios. Today, we're going to cover the field condition. So let's go to the let's go to the civil 3D drawing. This is a civil 3D drawing that we have, just a sample drawing that we got from the ANZ country kit. Here we have the profile view. Here we have the road corridor. And this is the assembly that was used to create this road corridor. So we have a carriageway, we have a cab, carriageway, we have a cab, uh, we have a, a walkway, and then we have a daylight surface. So what we're going to do is to first of all raise this profile. Let's say this profile hypothetically was two meters above where it is. Let's raise it. I'll go to geometry editor. Here I'll pick uh, I'll pick raise and lower PVIs. I want to raise it by two. Let's say if you wanted to lower it you'll just put a negative two a negative to the integer that you want to lower it with. So I want to raise it so I just put two Click OK. There you go. Our profile is raised. And now we have deeper field conditions. In fact, we do not have any cut conditions. So this is the existing ground and this is the finished ground, meaning this will all be filled. As you can see, the depths here, we have different depths. And we can rebuild our corridor to demonstrate what we've just done. So let's see. Let's click on the corridor and rebuild the corridor. As you can see, there's a lot of fill, especially on the left-hand side. So on this left-hand side, we will create a conditional subassembly that if the fill goes uh, above two meters, we have a retaining wall. If the fill is less than that, we just go with the, with the existing, with the existing uh, subassembly, which is the daylighting subassembly here. Let me delete this and let me go to the conditional tab. Let me pick the conditional cut of fill. And since we are in a fill condition entirely, let me just pick here on the type as fill. Then from 0 to 2 meters deep, I just want the normal, just want the normal sub assembly we deleted so let me put that but at the end of this if condition I want this subassembly we had selected let me escape and put that subassembly we will mirror this subassembly let's mirror it to this condition there we go now the other condition that we want to have here is the condition of a field beyond two meters deep. So between two higher figures, we want a retaining wall. So let's pick on the condition again. Here we change the parameters. So this, let's change it. This is still a field condition. to and beyond. Let's come and place it here at the end. There we have it. We might need to extend 
its its length we click on that and we go to its properties again let's increase seven and there we have it at the end of this condition we want a retaining wall so we go to a different tab here for the retaining walls and you pick a retaining wall here we place it with its default parameters here escape so this is see above the ground all right now that we have our section well set up instead of having two sections and dividing our corridor into different regions so that we apply different sections into the different regions we just have one section or one assembly and we use it to apply it to the entire road corridor so let's come here and rebuild again the corridor let's rebuild so that that is applied okay the grading here doesn't appear even for this uh, section it's because we need to set up the, the target surface so i click on the corridor again and i go to corridor properties i go to the targets and here at the surface tab click on the existing ground I rebuild the corridor there you can now see some regions there's some um, reading and some places there's a retaining wall these blue lines the uh, created feature lines probably represent the the retaining wall yes so let's click on this corridor and go to object viewer so that we try to view the retaining walls in the so let's see here we can see yeah this is the retaining wall but we can't properly see it this is because of the code set style let's change the code set style of the corridor pick on the corridor go to the properties palette again let's pick the old codes code set style and let's go back to object viewer Now we can see the retaining wall. You can see the sections where there is no fill, sections other than two meters applied. You can also do that condition of cut, whereby if, for example, you want cut between zero point and and two meters or three meters, whichever your design uh, proposes or demands we can have a, a, a ditch or a cut of such conditions if you have um, cut above a particular figure that you want you may have a different kind of sub assembly right so remember to to subscribe to like to share this content if uh, you learn something and also don't forget to subscribe see you next time